Welcome back to Learning with Liam. I have another interesting experiment for anyone that cared to tune in today. This one, kind of funny. Kind of funny, but also not really. It also violated natural rights, or human rights. So that is not funny in that respect, but it's funny in its source material. The material being underage drinking, which again, I understand underage drinking can be a huge problem, but I also understand how it can just be stupid and kind of funny and you know, I'll just leave it at that. But bottom line is the rules are put there for a reason, so we have to respect them with good measure. Um, so this research project is called the Adolescent Alcohol Consumption Project and it was ran by Charles Atkin in 1989. And essentially what happened here was uh, research wanted to determine whether media campaigns could discourage adolescent drinking. So pretty much he went to the school district and he promised uh, secrecy to everyone who took the survey. So all of the students went in and took this survey and the survey was asking them how often they drank. Uh, well, whether they drank or not, if they did drink, how often did they drink, how much did they drink, and so on. Uh, I have not read the actual survey, but I'd imagine that it touched upon all of those very basic points. So, uh, to provide baseline measures of actual alcohol consumption, area adolescents are surveyed with the promise of confidentiality. The promise of confidentiality. Now, the strategy proves effective, duh, duh, duh. unknown to the adolescents, one of the strategies the researcher planned on using was to publish all of the data in the local newspaper. So all the data collected by the said adolescents in this school district was then published in the local newspaper. And all of the parents who parented their children in this local district were, was able to see the results of the study in the, um, in the newspaper. And you can see why that's a huge deal because not only did they violate the students' trust, but the students' lives were drastically changed. I don't know how drastically changed, but they were changed because the parents now felt that they had to crack down. Now, no names were published, and that is what Charles Atkins hid behind. He said that there were no names published, therefore it wasn't a violation of privacy, but when you're talking about a small group that you're surveying, it's pretty apparent that if the group comes back 90% positive, or 90% of them say yes, they had uh, partook in, or partaken in, um, in underage drinking, then that evidence is pretty damning, and you can assume that your child has been one of those people. Uh, maybe not assume, but there's, it's hinting at the fact that your child has been underage drinking. So anyhow, the results were bad, and the results kind of beg the question, is it ever right for a researcher to lie to a participant? And I know that the easy answer for many of you will be no. It's never right for a researcher to lie to a participant. However, then we have to think about the placebo effect. So for those of you that don't know the placebo effect, it is a very well-known part of research where, say, one patient is given a pill that said will help cure their cancer, and another is given a similar looking pill, perhaps identical looking pill, that is just a sugar pill. And the point of the placebo is to A, see whether or not the cancer pill is effective by not administering any help to a select group of people, the control group you might call them, and B, to see whether or not the placebo actually has an effect, whether a positive mindset actually has an effect on results, uh, physical results, mental results, emotional results, etc. Um, now, that is an example of lying to them, lying to your patients, lying to the people in the study, lying to, right, so lying to those involved in the study. But is it right on this scale? So even though this is just kind of a funny, oh, ha, 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 I ratted you out to your parents type of ordeal, the, the underlying connotations of this are quite bad. They're pretty, uh, they're pretty harmful and they're pretty serious. Um, so should researchers be allowed to lie to their patients, to the people who are undergoing the experiment? Again, many of you will say no. I would say no myself, but then again, you take under the account the placebo effect and that changes things around uh, because it's very important and backed up by a lot of science, science which I cannot explain to you right now. So learning with Liam, what did we learn today? We learned about the alcohol experiment which I will say the Adolescent Alcohol Consumption Project. That is what the experiment was. I encourage you all to look into it further. All right. Thanks for tuning in. Till next time.